Now, our young people today, they, they backed it up by saying that they are praying yes. that you and I Pray. might be ready when Jesus returns. Are you ready? Get set. Let's go. Amen. Because Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. And we ought to be ready. I learned in Sunday school this morning that we ought to be praying for God to open a door that we might go out and tell somebody that they need to be ready. I'm trying to help me up in here this morning. We want to say good morning to everybody. Those in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sanctuary and those who are online this morning. We need to be ready when Jesus returns. Our young people has been leading us in worship this morning. But you can't top that. They are praying that we might be ready. Because that is indeed a free gift. Salvation has been freely given to all who might believe. Romans chapter 5 this morning. Praying that we might be ready. Amen. Romans chapter 5. It was read in our hearing this morning during our responsive reading. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 18. Eternal God our Father, we do pray that we will be ready when you return. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for our young people leading us this morning. And we pray now, Father, that we sit at our tent doors, that we might be attentive. As Paul said this morning, that we must pray and watch. But in all of praying and watching, he said that we must be thankful. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. Speak, Lord, for your servant here. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Romans 5, 18, it says, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification of life. Just for a few moments this morning, the free gift. See, some folk love to get free stuff. But when it comes to salvation, Many folk would rather choose to walk away. But do you love that which is free? It do, salvation does not cost us anything other than to believe on the one who has given everything. Jesus Christ laid down his life that you and I might have life. But Paul's letter to the church at Rome, it speaks of humanity's depravity and God's response to our sinful condition. The young people just said they're praying that we might be ready. See, Paul, he wrote to ensure that we understand that the whole world is guilty before a holy God and salvation could not be achieved through the law but by the giving of his life, which came through Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. Last week we said that the Son of Man has power. And Paul is writing that you and I might what? Might believe as Christians and understand the purpose of the law and how God fulfilled the law through his Son, Jesus Christ. We're talking about a free gift. Paul to the church at Galatia, he said that the law was given to us as a schoolmaster to teach us that, you know, we can't keep it. We, we cannot keep it. And, and Jesus Christ came that we what, that we might have life knowing and understood, understanding rather, that we couldn't keep the law. But the Bible teaches you and I that we have been justified by faith in Jesus Christ. The free gift that has been given to you and I. See, Paul, he writes that we might understand the grace of God. Don't you know it is God's unmerited favor that you and I have obtained salvation? It was not how good we think we were, how good we think we are. It was the blood of Jesus 
that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But see, chapter 5, it opens with Paul teaching us how to obtain peace with God. In verse 1, he says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul said, if you want to have peace with God, we have to understand, we have to accept Jesus' work at Calvary as, we, as, we're, as we're marching toward eternity. God is calling you and I that we might what? That we might accept Jesus' work at Calvary, that we might be at peace with him. But see, the scripture, it moves on, verses 3 through 8, how we must be joyful during times of tribulations. See, as, as believers, you and I are going to go through something. If it's not, we put it up uh, against ourselves. It's, it's something that's coming down the road that you and I might turn unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. But see, Paul continues to encourage us in nine verses 9 through 11 by explaining that we are saved from God's wrath. See, that's good to know that, 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 that we serve a God that, that, that's coming back to judge the quick and the dead. And the Bible is teaching you and I that we ought to be encouraged that the believer, we're, we're going to escape the wrath of God. But at the same token, Paul told that church at Corinth, you know, he said that, 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 that our works are going to be tried by fire as we appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He said wood, hay, and stubble. You know, some stuff going to burn up. But salvation is indeed secure. But Paul says those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, we're going to escape God's wrath. But today's lesson, it comes from verses 12 through 21, which speaks on the differences, the difference rather, between righteousness and condemnation. The Bible is teaching you and I in verse 16, it says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses of justification. In other words, I don't care how much we mess up, the Bible is teaching you and I that we can fess up and we can be healed from our sin sick diseases. Right there in John, 1 John, his letter, chapter 1 and verse 9, it says that, 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 that you and I must confess our sin. He says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But Paul is telling us here in chapter 5 of Romans, he says, Adam, his sin brought judgment and condemnation. It says by one offense. By, by, by Adam being disobedient to the will, the way, and the word of God, it says that sin, you know, it entered into the world. But Adam's sin brought judgment and condemnation, but Jesus' work at Calvary, it brought us justification. See, God looks at you and I as though we have never sinned. But verse 18 says, Therefore, as by one unfit, one offense, of one judgment, it came upon all men to condemnation. See, when sin entered into the garden, the Bible is teaching you and I that sin entered into the whole wild world. But see, when we mess up, we always want to go and blame Adam. See, Adam, he blamed Eve and Eve, she blamed the serpent. Yeah, who are you and I blaming when, when, when we, we do wrong? We always looking to blame somebody else. But Paul says, therefore as by the offense of one judgment came unto all men condemnation, he said, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto what? Unto justification of life. Just like Adam messed it up for all of us, Jesus fixed it for all of us. Amen. See, people love to talk about the first Adam 
But Paul is talking about the second Adam. See, see, if you want to talk about an Adam, I'm not, not, I'm not talking about the, the, the things that we see with the molecules and I'm not talking about the building of, of electricity. I'm, I'm not talking about those types of atoms. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, who is the second Adam. It says that one office that by, by what Adam in the, in the, in the garden done, you know, it, 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 it made a way for all of us, you know, to follow him. But when Jesus Christ showed up, he gave us another way that we might choose to follow him. See, I'm trying to help me up in this moment. See, Adam did not have to commit multiple sins. He failed in that one act of disobedience. See, when we are disobedient to God, we are sinning against God. That's what the Bible teaches us over in James. James says that, 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 that God does not tempt us. He says that when we mess up, when we sin, we have been drawn away by our own lust that we might do something, say something, or think something that's not pleasing to God. But see, offense, Sister Belfry, our homework in Bible study is to go and look at the different dynamics of sin. All unrighteousness is sin. But see, offense in our lesson this morning, it means to trespass. That's what I'm for, for, for Wednesday night, Sister Beth, uh, trespass. See, see, trespassing is crossing the line. See, have you ever crossed over into somebody else's property? That's what we were saying on Wednesday night when that, that, there are all kinds of signs posted. You know, you know I, I grew up in Alabama and that, there's pastors everywhere. Uh, I'm not talking about preachers, but pastors where where horses and 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 and, and cattle, you know, you know where they are, and you might see a sign that says "No trespassing." See that trespass me? Don't cross the line. See when you cross over into somebody else's property, there's no telling what might happen to you. But what I'm saying is that see 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 when Adam when when he trespassed against God, he crossed the line. And see, the problem is, is many of us is just like Adam. We crossing the line and we need a lifeline to get us back. And Paul says that Jesus Christ is that lifeline to where we crossed over. Now that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of that sin and clean us up. See, is there every God of how many times that we mess up if our heart is right? eventually we're not going to cross that same line. We might do something else and now God got to deliver us from crossing that line. But see, just like sin of one brought about condemnation, the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, he brought us justification. Now we can live a righteous life before God through his son, Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ is the free gift. He is the gift that God has given you and I that after we strayed away and now we can come back to Jesus Christ and he will put us back in the household. You know, our relationship is restored. The fellowship is restored. But we have to acknowledge that we crossed the line and that second Adam, Jesus Christ, he is the one that laid down his life that you and I might have the free gift. But see, the free gift has been given to all of us without merit. It wasn't how good I think I am or how good I hope to be. Uh, you know, uh, I, mean, I remember when, when Jesus was doing his teaching and the young man saying, Master, good teacher, what, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? He said, first of all, why are you calling me good? See, 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 Jesus Christ laid down his humanity, you know, I mean, his deity enough to say that, you know, uh, I'm no different than anybody else when it comes to being in this flesh. But he says there's none good but God. What Jesus was saying, even though I'm God in the flesh, I still want to acknowledge, you know, without the God, the Father in whom which we serve, he is the only one that's good. But see, it was no good merit of our own that Jesus Christ brought us back into the fellowship with God. 
It was by him laying down his life that we might accept his work at Calvary. That's what makes us what? That's what makes us right with God. That's what gives us the peace of God. And, and this gift that has been given by divine grace. See, God has blessed you. He has blessed me. God continues to, to, to bless us in spite of the stuff that's going on around us. God still blesses us in spite of the stuff that's going on within us. Because Paul told this chain church, he, he said that there is no good thing that dwelleth in me. He, he says, I'm talking about the flesh, but the spirit of God that resides in the believer, he yearns to do the will of God. And by Jesus Christ laying down his life, we have what? We have the ability to do all that God has created and called you and I to do. Let's look at this gift. See, this gift, it, 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 it denotes extraordinary powers. Don't you know it is God that's working in the life of the believer to will and to do of his good pleasure? See, I don't care how much I, I, I study. I don't care how much I practice. I don't care how much I do any of that. If, 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 it's, if it wasn't for the Spirit of God, empowering and teaching and giving all that, that that's required that you and I might do, we'll never do any of it. And that's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, that the grace in which God has given us, this free gift that God has given us, he's given it that we might glorify his name. See, I can't take no glory for anything that God continues to do in the life of the believer. I cannot take credit for what God has done in my own personal life, but I thank God each and every day that it could have been the other way. But God, he stopped by that you and I might be able to obtain this free gift. See, that's the problem. That's the issue. People don't want something that's free unless it's money, unless it's a car. But see, what I'm trying to say is our money and our cause, we're going to leave behind. We got to go and face this free gift. The free gift of, gift of salvation has been given to you and I, and God is calling you and I that we might exercise faith in him, that we might go out and tell somebody that salvation is free. But as I go to my seat this morning, this free gift, See, free is something that has been given. You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to buy it. All you have to do is accept it. See, by accepting Jesus' work at Calvary, we're letting God know that if I'm going to be have peace with you, if I'm going to escape the wrath of God, if I come to the understanding that I've been justified by faith, i got to accept the work of the obedience of one person, and that's Jesus Christ. But this free gift has brought us favor. Yes, it has. See, favor implies a kindly regard or friendly disposition shown by someone. It is merely an attitude of the mind. Paul said in our Sunday school lesson this morning that we ought to be in constant prayer. We ought to be praying that God might continue to move in our lives. We ought to be watching as God might continue to do those things, work those things out, and we ought to be doing it with thanksgiving. And what I'm trying to say is that as we pray, as we seek God's face, as God continues to dialogue with us and, and we with him, we ought to be watchful because God is answering, God is moving us, and sometimes we're trying to get to the end without, you know, starting at the beginning. But see, favor is often shown as an outward manifestation of a friendly approval. It says that we have peace with God because we have what? We, are what? we have accepted Jesus' work at Calvary. You know, favor is something that has been given or done, not out of what? Not out of what? Something that I've done, 
not out of goodwill, you know, nothing that good that I've done to obtain salvation. It is all predicated at the work on the works at Calvary, which came through Jesus Christ. But favor, it is a kind act. You know, God could have slammed us, you know, like we've been slamming folk all our lives. You know, favor is holding someone in high regard. You know, favor is, is showing, you know, kindness, extending kindness toward someone. You know, uh, we said, Paul said that this morning in our Sunday school that, 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 that when we, when we talk to people, we, we ought to be walking. He, he said the way that we walk in wisdom, you know, in other words, what Paul is saying is that when we understand this free gift, when we understand this favor, just like God has favored us, we need to favor somebody else. Uh, you remember that song that God has favored us? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It came out in, in the late 90s, early 2000. God has favored you and I. See, see, God has given us preferential treatment. That, that's what favor is. God, you know, he looking not only beyond our faults, he saw our faults and he gave us everything in which we stand in need of. See, 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 th th this favor, you know, it's a gift. It's a, it's a token of love. It, it's a token of God's love. And God continues to show you and I favor because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. He says here in verse number 17, it says, For if by one man's offense, death reign by one. He said, much more, they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. See, God has shown you and I favor. Uh, see, that's, that's a sign that God loves us. That's a sign that, that God has forgiven us and all we have to do is accept Jesus' work at Calvary. It says by the obedience of one as we accept what God is doing in our lives, we have the favor of God. See, having peace, being at peace with God, that's favor. It, it, it's, it's favor. Uh, it says that, you know, the wrath in which, you know, God is going to lay out on those who have not accepted Jesus Christ, you know, in their life before they leave earth. They're going to experience the wrath of God. So the believer, we have favor because we are going to escape God's wrath. He says that, you know, by one, you know, chaos came into the world. But then he says one, peace with God came into the world. <laughs> but as I, <coughs> excuse me, as I hasten to a close this morning, this free gift, not only this free gift has been given to us that we might have favor, the free gift have eradicated, it has erased our faults. Don't you know that we have faults? Don't you know that there's something wrong with me? I got an issue. But see, faults are known as defects, marks of imperfection, flaws, errors, mistakes, failures, and even wrong, wrongful acts. But see, faults are also called misdeeds. Here's another one of them words of sin, unrighteousness, transgressions. See, transgressions are known as sin. It, it means to err. It means to stray. It, it means to get off the beaten path. See, every now and then you and I, we get off of the beaten path, but the Bible teaches you and I that God has given us favor because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and when we acknowledge that we have strayed off of that path and we ask God for forgiveness, you know, he wipes that slate clean. I love the favor in which God has given us because it tells us when we confess our sin. We, he's, for just, forgive, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And it says that he'll cleanse us up. In other words, he'll wipe away our faults. Look what he says here in verse number 19 as I hasten to a close. The Bible says, For as by one man's disobedience, Many were made sinners, talking about you and I. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. See, God has made, he has declared you and I righteous. That, that's what justification is. It's God, he no longer looks at us the way that he used to look at us. Because we, even though sometimes we mess up, 
God knows that we have a relationship with him. And when we fess up, we, God makes all things new. The Bible teaches you and I in verse number 20, it says, moreover, the law entered. It says that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. In other words, I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you have said. I don't care what you have thought. The Bible is teaching you and I that God will erase that stuff in which this pleases him because we have favor because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And the Bible says when the things get a little bit more rough, don't you know that God he has the power to overcome all of that stuff that's coming our way. But I like what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning. Not only that we have favor with God the Bible is teaching you and I that God has erased our faults and this free gift I'm trying to help us up in here this morning. The free gift, it has solidified our future. Uh, yes, it is. The young people told us a few minutes ago that they pray that we all be ready when Jesus returns. And I'm trying to help us up in here this morning to let us know that the free gift, he has showed up. He has given us favor. He has, what? He has erased our faults. And the Bible is teaching you and I that our future it has been what? It has been what? It has been justified. The future where God is taking you and I. See, future, it points to sometime in the near future. Don't you know? I used to say that eternity is around the corner. But don't you know eternity is right in our faces? The Bible is teaching you and I that we have favor with God. God has erased our faults. And he has what? He has given you and I a bright future. I don't know about you. But God has given us all that we need in his son, Jesus Christ. But, but see, see this, this, this thing called future is points to something. You know, I don't know. I, you know, Jesus Christ can come back in the next split second. You know, that's why Paul says, you know, in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye, it says that the trumpet going to sound and the sky's going to open up. We're not going to prevent them that are asleep, but all of us going to be caught up to meet him in the air. You need to understand that you your future, it has been secured. And the Bible is teaching you and I that the future is something that's going to come after this. Have you ever said, you know, now this, then what? Don't you know that the Bible is teaching you and I that God is coming back for his church with our spot, El Rico. I'm not talking about 205 Pleasant Street over here in Vienna, Virginia. He's talking about the, the ones who come inside of 205 Pleasant Street, those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. He's not talking about brick and mortar. He's talking about coming back and get the spirit that resides on the inside of you and I. See, future, it talks about something that's that's coming for us. Something that is about to appear. appear. Uh, the Bible says that we don't know Dick and Manley. You know, when he shows up, we don't know what he gonna look like, but we gonna be just like him. The Bible is telling you and I that our future is secure in Jesus Christ. See, see, uh, this thing called future is it, it says something is approaching. See, 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 each and every day something is happening. If you looked at the news on yesterday, out there in Los Angeles, they getting snow. Uh, there's something that they never get. See, 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 man, see what they would do. They would attribute it. They attribute it to global warming, but I attribute it to the gospel because Jesus Christ, he says that we're not going to be able to tell the time of the seasons. And so if we see that Jesus' word is working right now, seeing that those things are going to take place, you have to understand that the believer, we have a bright future. That's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning. See, this future, this bright future has been given to you and I. And the Bible is teaching you let me get my spot. I'm trying to get back there. But the Bible is teaching you and I that we ought to be expecting God to show up in our lives. See, see, God will show up in an inopportune time. What I'm trying to say, glory, we here right now, but we can be gone in the next split second. But you have to understand that the Bible has taught us this morning that, that God has given us the free gift. He said that he has erased our fault. The Bible is telling you and I this morning that we have a bright future. And the Bible is teaching you and I this morning as I go to my seat. He says here in verse number 21, he says that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life 
life by Jesus Christ our Lord. See, I stopped by to tell us this afternoon that the Bible is true. That the Bible says you and I have a bright future. The free gift has been given that you and I might come to the know and understand that we serve a holy God. We serve a God this afternoon that's able to do all things and, and he continues to do all things well. The Bible is teaching you and I this morning this bright future that God has given us favor and as we continue to live out this life we have to come to know and understand that our, what, our faults has been erased and the Bible is teaching you and I that we have a bright future. God has forgiven us. God loves us. By the sin of one man, disobedience entered into the world. But don't you know righteousness by one being obedient in Jesus Christ has put us on a new path. And the Bible teaches you and I this morning that as we continue to understand that we have peace with God, that's faith. Yes, it is. Our faults have been erased. We confess our sins. And the Bible teaches you and I we have a bright future because one day he's coming back to receive us unto himself that where he is we might be also. The Bible is teaching you and I this morning that we have a free gift in Jesus Christ. He desires that you and I might continue to build our relationship. As the young people say, I pray that we all be ready when Jesus Christ comes. Do you know what it means to be ready? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And all we have to do is acknowledge Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. The Bible says that he did not come into the world to condemn the world. Paul says that by Adam, condemnation showed up. But then he says by Jesus Christ, the one that's obedient, he says what? He says that, 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 that righteousness, you know, you know he, he said that we've been justified. Justification. God looks at you and I as though we have never sinned. It says by the obedience of one, it has been justification unto life. So what? The first Adam messed up. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, he fixed up. And the Bible is telling you and I that he didn't come into the world to condemn it, but the world through him might be saved. He says that those who have believed are not condemned, but those who fail to believe, they're condemned already. And Paul also told this same church, he said, if you confess with your mouth, believe within your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he died and God raised him from the dead, you shall have eternal life. Call whosoever, call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Would you accept this free gift today? This free gift has given us faith. He's erased our faults. And he's given us a bright future. Contact us here at newunionbc.org. We'll continue to walk with you. We'll witness to you. But we can worship the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together. Keep walking, keep witnessing, and keep worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because we have faith. Our faults have been erased. We have indeed a bright future. May God bless you. May heaven smile.